Oh, hello there, dear viewers. Today I tell you a history of a toothbrush, the item most people cannot imagine their life without. But a toothbrush, in a shape we know today, is quite a recent invention. So, what did we use before? Let's find out. Oh, by the way, if you want to discover the terrifying but exciting history of dentistry and learn about the toothworms, click here. But now, toothbrush! Here we come! Cleaning teeth was a concern since ancient times. The first toothbrush of humanity was an index finger, and instead of paste, people used soot. That's good to know if you happen to be lost somewhere outside the civilization. The first tooth powder consisting of something more than soot was invented by Egyptians 5000 years BC. The ancient toothpaste was composed of ash from ox hooves, eggshell fragments, pumice and myrrh. And since no applying tool was found, it's safe to assume that your finger was an Egyptian toothbrush. The first teeth cleaning instruments in a form of a chewing stick come from 3500 BC from ancient Babylonia. Chew sticks or mm, twig brushes got on pretty well. They were found in Egyptian tomb from 3000 BC and they also appear in Chinese records from 1600 BC. Other name for a chew stick is siwak or miswak. And as such, they are mentioned in India's ancient Manulos, Buddhism, the Talmud and Quran. So, chewing sticks are also associated with a religious practice and ritual purity. In Islamic countries, till this day, it is recommended to use a chewing stick, a miswak, before every prayer. As you already figured out, the chewing sticks are still widely used in Africa, India and the rest of the Middle East. They are even commercially available in the USA. So, hmm, what exactly is a chewing stick? It's usually a pencil-sized twig or root of some aromatic tree, usually the neem or arak tree. Those trees contain natural antibacterial and soothing compounds. Arak tree is even called the toothbrush tree. In India, you will find mostly neem sticks, as neem tree is the basis for Indian chewing sticks. If you want, you can prepare by yourself such a traditional chewing stick. You just have to whittle about 1.5 cm, which is about a half of an inch of the twig's bark, soak it in water for about 15 minutes and chew it. The tree fibers will form then a natural brush with a frayed ends. And now you can chew brush all you want. You can also sharpen the other end of a twig and use it as a toothpick. Simple, right? Or you can buy one of those high-end, super modern, expensive kits that connect the 21st century technology with a stick. As if during a few thousand years of the humanity development in that matter, uh, people lost the ability to simply whittle a piece of a twig without the use of a specialized laser sharpened uh, polycarbonate tool. <laughs> but twigs were not the only thing people used. Other ancient cultures used animal bones, porcupine quills or bird feathers. The Greeks and Romans used classic toothpicks for oral hygiene. This toothbrush that looks nearly the same as the modern one was invented in China and, according to some sources, it was used during the Tang dynasty between the 7th and 10th century AD. It had a bamboo or animal bone handle and bristles were harvested <coughs> from wild hogs, boars living in Siberia and northern China, because bristles of those boars are firmer due to the cold climate. But boars' bristles were not the only source of brushing material. In 1223, a Japanese Zen master, Dogen Kigen, mentioned in his writings that in China he'd noticed monks cleaning their teeth with brushes. These brushes had an oxbone handle and were made of horsetail hair. 
However, according to the American Dental Association, the earliest mention of a toothbrush in a shape we know today comes from a 17th century Chinese encyclopedia, where it stated that a toothbrush invention dates back to 1498 China. Chinese toothbrushes arrived to Europe with the Silk Road merchants in the 17th century. Europeans found boar bristles to be too coarse for their delicate gums and preferred the softer, horsehair version. Even Napoleon Bonaparte used a horsehair brush. Those natural brushes were mass imported to Europe until the mid 20th century. In 1683, a Dutch scientist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, the father of microbiology, compared samples gathered from men who never brushed their teeth with his samples. He, of course, cared about oral hygiene. Using the microscope, he discovered that brushing teeth eliminates large quantities of bacteria. The word toothbrush was first recorded in 1690. It is found in a famous English antiquary Anthony Wood's autobiography, where he mentions buying a toothbrush. People, of course, had to use those brushes, toothbrushes earlier, but he was the first one to publish it, so he gets the credit for it. In the 17th and 18th century Europe, a toothbrush was treated as a luxury item imported for the wealthy ones from exotic Orient. Even the father of modern dentistry, French dentist Pierre Fauchard, and France was considered a pioneer country in dentistry at that time, suggested using a sponge for dental cleaning instead of a finger or very popular in France toothbrushes. At the same time, he discouraged people from using horse bristle as it could damage teeth. The year 1780 marks the year when the first European mass-produced modern-ish toothbrushes come to existence, designed and made in England by William Addis. In 1770, Addis was jailed for inciting a riot, and as it is in those places, people have a lot of free time on their hands. Addis found traditional method of cleaning teeth, rag, salt and soot as ineffective and spent some time figuring out what to do better. He kept a piece of a bone from his meal and shaped it into a handle. He obtained some boar bristles from a jail guard and using available simple tools, wire and glue, created a modern toothbrush. The crazy thing is, that is exactly the opposite of what happens in jails today, where the process is reversed and a toothbrush is turned into a sharp shank or a sheath with the purpose of being used as a stabbing weapon. That is why some jails introduced no shank brushes. But let's go back to the times when people actually did some good in prisons. When Addis got released, he started a toothbrush manufacturing business, which made him wealthy. After his death, in 1808, his son also William took over, and all in all, the toothbrushing business stayed in the family ownership until 1996. It is today's Wisdom Toothbrushes, producing in the UK 70 million toothbrushes a year. They were also the first to introduce nylon bristles during World War II, and all thanks to the time in jail. That's what I call a proper resocialization. From the late 18th until mid 20th century, the main material used for high quality toothbrushes were bristles coming from hairs of aforementioned boars living in cold climate of Siberia and northern China. Wires or threads were used to fix tufts of boar hair in place. By 1840, countries like England, Germany, France and Japan were manufacturing toothbrushes using stiff but flexible local boars or pigs bristle for cheaper models. Sometimes badger hair was used in more expensive ones. The typical handle was made of the cattle thigh bones, which did not split easily when tufts or bristles were fixed in place and were resistant to moisture. The handle could also be made of expensive materials like ivory or metal. It was to last for years. The first American dentist recommended using toothbrushes as early as 1779. Those toothbrushes were imported from Europe, but were barely used in America. It took nearly 80 years for Americans to patent their first toothbrush. It was in 1857 when H. N. Wadsworth, 
was issued a patent, but mass production started much later, in the 1880s. The first American brushes used animal Siberian boar hair. Well, the hair is still an animal tissue, that is why the bristle retained bacteria didn't dry properly, could cut your gums and simply fall out, so it wasn't a perfect material. One of the first American toothbrush factories was Florence Manufacturing Company, later known as Prophylactic Brush Company, established in Massachusetts in 1866. In the 1880s, they started selling their very popular prophylactic toothbrush with animal bristle. Their toothbrushes were well designed, a handle had a hole so the brush could be hung to dry after use. Apart from that, handles were marked with different numbers to prevent mixing up toothbrushes between family members. Their prophylactic brush was a bestseller as late as 1940s, when DuPont nylon bristles became more commercially available. That was the time the company from prophylactic switched to Prolon toothbrush, leaving poor boars unemployed, which, by the way, was a great advertising success. Now everyone could feel in their mouth this great technological progress. In the 1920s, natural bristle toothbrushes with bone or wood handle were imported from Japan and easily available in American drugstores. Nevertheless, only 20% of the US population owned one. With time, bone handles were replaced with celluloid ones. In 1938, DuPont introduced Dr. West's Miracle Tuft brush that replaced animal bristles with nylon filaments. This was the brush we know today, look at it, would you say it's nearly a century old? Finally, due to the absolute lack of organic matter in the bristle or handles, toothbrushes dried quickly and bacteria had no possibility to get into filaments or handles. Handles made of bone practically vanished after World War II. It is also thanks to that war that Americans started to brush their teeth on a regular basis at least once a day. Before the war, people used toothbrushes, let's say, economically. But American soldiers returning home from the war brought with them the army drill of brushing teeth daily. That, plus the availability of toothbrushes, caught on quickly. By the 1950s, nearly 80% of toothbrushes had nylon bristles, but those bristles were still hard and caused gum damage to some of the users. That's why in 1950 in the USA, a retired Navy periodontist, Dr. Robert Hudson, designed a softer bristle toothbrush and named it Oral-B60. He used thinner filaments in the tufts. The first electric toothbrush was patented in the US in 1937 by Tomlinson Mosley and his company Motodent Inc. under the name Motodent. But since not every house had electricity, it was too early to value the potential of this invention. In 1954, the electric toothbrush from Switzerland under the name Broxodent tried to conquer the world, entering the US market at the centennial celebration of the American Dental Association in 1959. With success? Well, in Consumer Report from 1962 we can read such an opinion. For the average family, the electric can opener is silly enough, but the electric toothbrush is stupidity on such a magnitude that it reflects a new all-time low in the intelligence level of our American way of life. <laughs> and the studies from the 1970s showed that most Americans bought only one simple toothbrush a year. In 1977, Johnson & Johnson developed the Reach toothbrush, the design of the head and longer front bristles allowed to reach back teeth. Also, the filaments varied, outer bristles were longer than the central ones for better cleaning in between the teeth. A year later, in 1978, Dr. George C. Collins introduced the Collins Curve toothbrush. It was unique in this way that it was the first toothbrush with curved bristles, which easily reached in between the teeth. In 2003, the Lemelson MIT survey revealed that the toothbrush was chosen as the number one invention American people could not live without. The toothbrush beat out even the car, not to mention the computer. 
Today we have the whole gamut of toothbrushes, from maze wax, disposable chewables, sometimes offered in restaurants and hotels, electric brushes, sonic, ultrasonic, interdentals, and tufts, soft, hard, whatever you wish. Funny fact is that the most expensive usable toothbrush, not made of gold and not ornamented with diamonds, just the most expensive everyday used toothbrush is Reina's Luxury Toothbrush for 4000 US dollars. It has changeable brush head, its handle is made of titanium, which obviously is not gold, and that's it. It doesn't vibrate or anything of that kind. In terms of hygiene, it's not much different than 1950 or I'll be 60. But we live in crazy times. 4K for a toothbrush with metal handle? Why not? So, take care of yourselves and remember to floss before brushing. And also remember, subscribing to us will make our smile dim the sun.